despite being a world-renowned sculptor, architect, and engineer. Michelangelo had an unmatched devotion to his childlike sense of curiosity. And, and symbolizing this inspirational way of living is one of his most famous quotes, in Cora Imparo, Italian for yet, I am still learning. I first discovered this quote in second grade, framed and hung in the walls of my English as a second language classroom. My teacher at the time, Mrs. Gutierrez, well, she'd explained to us what that quote had meant to her, stating from that day on forward until our very last that there will always be a concept, something that we don't fully understand. She explained that no matter how many classes we take after hers, field trips we go on, older we become, that our stories are never ending because there is an endless world of knowledge and experiences waiting to be explored. And as I grew older, this notion became true to form. And in Cora and Paro, yet I am still learning, well, it's led me to believe that by enabling myself to be curious enough to strive for information, well, that's the key to true fulfillment the key to true success, and yes, the key to garnering a culture of respect in our society. But inevitably, it's easy to lose sight of this optimistic viewpoint. After all, we've all had times in our lives where our identities and backgrounds have been challenged or even disrespected. Moments where we felt different times when we didn't fit in with those around us. But for many of us, our differences are what define us. Differences in how we look, speak, or act. Differences in who we love or what we believe in. Differences in how or where we were raised. But for me, this notion of encora amparo, yet I am still learning, well, it's motivated me to not only pursue endless knowledge, but also to fully embrace my identity. And before moving forward, I, I want to... I want to define what identity is, because to many people's chagrin, identity is more than simply a difference between race and culture. Identity is all the qualities and characteristics that truly define a person. It encompasses age, beliefs, gender, nationality, ethnicity, sexual orientation, and many and any other unique traits. And it's important to respect identity and the inevitable diversity that comes along with it, because it is a fundamental aspect of human dignity and equality. For me, nothing has cast a spotlight more on my identity or has exposed my, my perceived differences than moving to the United States of America from my birth country of the Philippines when I was just eight years old. You know, living in the Philippines was everything I could have ever ask for and more as a child. Life was good. I, I'm a proud Filipino. And I'm proud that my identity is rooted in this, in the fact that I am a Filipino-American. I'm proud that my identity is rooted in the fact that I am an immigrant. You know, the, 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 the memories that I cherish the most were those spent with my family. And, and in our culture, family is everything. Our culture is also rooted in hard work. And, and while many Filipinos, including my own family, and friends experienced tough situations and even poverty, the look in their eyes always gave a sense of hope, resilience, and always finding a silver lining. I'm proud, and, and, and I still, memory, still cherish these memories today. But at the time, I was so confused as to why my parents would voluntarily choose to leave their lives of comfort in their community to live a life of unfamiliarity and tireless labor. After all, life was hard after the move. But as, as I grew older, I, I started to realize that like any other country in this world, my, my birth country was not exempt from its imperfections. The prevalent issues of, of graft and corruption ran rampant in the, the state and national government, proving educational equities throughout my birth country. And as a result, a staggering 2.8 million Filipino youth that are out of school. Had I been raised there, I, I most likely would have not had the educational opportunities today, and for, for that I can't help but to be thankful. Life after the move was, was hard for my, my parents, and I, I could see the exhaustion in their eyes after a long day's work, wanting nothing more, nothing more, an equitable life for their son. I, I started to question myself and couldn't help but to feel guilty. Was it really all worth it for me, for me to receive a quality education 
in the United States. As I grew older, I started to realize that if it wasn't for my parents' tenacity and their hard work, I wouldn't be here today. And I don't bring up the Philippines just to tell you my story. I do so to show you how Encora and Paro, yet I am still learning, teaches us that change is inevitable. But it requires the same amount of hope, resiliency, and always finding a silver lining to navigate through, through life's hardest change. I'm proud that my identity is rooted in this change. I'm proud that I had to experience all of this at the age of eight years old, lacking proficient English in a community to call home. It was a time in my life where I felt as if every single aspect of my identity was challenged. And for me, my experience as a Filipino immigrant and a first-generation college student, two aspects of my identity proved the most challenging for me. My age and my identity. And each and every year, I'm reminded at how the world points out these two aspects. Each and every year on August 7th, my birthday, I, I'm reminded how the world inevitably sets limits based on age. Or eligibility to vote, to, to, to drive a car, to, to be drafted to war, or even watch a movie, is all dictated by our age. And that's fine, but the unfortunate fact of the matter is that there's usually a negative connotation when the words young and achiever are put together. Oftentimes, when a young person advocates for something bigger than themselves, they're seen as inadequate, inexperienced, impressionable, or even ignorant. And this statement has, count, has manifested itself countless times throughout important events in the past 10 years, where the youth have fervently rallied around social issues only to be disparaged. From mobilizing school walkouts, to, to advocating for gun control, to, to, to mobilizing climate strikes spearheaded by youth, Young people face accusations of not being able to fully understand complex political and social issues. Despite vehement criticism, simply due to her age, youth remain undeterred in their mission to champion vital causes that will shape their future world. And the fortunate fact of the matter is the same young people organizing these events that are accomplishing extraordinary things, well, they're labeled as negative overachievers. And if we continue this negative habit, we run the risk of young people no longer raising their hands and stepping up to the plate. Because if we challenge age, then we challenge identity. And if we challenge identity, then we challenge lifelong learning. And in doing so, we eliminate the abilities to ask questions, to build opinions, to take action, and to do much more. You know, age diversity isn't only important for individual identity, but it's also imperative for professional and corporate success. According to a study done by the AARP, it found that age diversity truly does impact business performance. Companies that promote age diversity in their employee age range, well, they experience best, better financial performance than those with homogenous age groups. Age diversity, well, it also helps combat ageism, and it promotes a more tolerant and equitable workforce. If individuals with all ages feel that they are respected and valued, it creates a more equitable and harmonious society where everyone, everyone is able to fully embrace their identity and to reach their full potential. Likewise, as I grew older, I, I, I realized that another aspect of my identity, my nationality, dictated how I was perceived. And as a young immigrant, being scrutinized for acting and looking different, it hit me quickly and regularly throughout my time in the United States. Eight, 14, and 19 years old, important timestamps in my mind to this day where however much I thought I was assimilating to American culture, the society around me seemed to point out ways where I was still different. At eight years old, I, I, I felt as if I had to stop eating my favorite foods after being made fun of for how traditional Filipino delicacies like chicken adobo had smelled like during lunch. 
I had to sit through the other boys telling me that if I wanted to sit at their table, I was going to have to throw that away. I remember locking myself up in the bathroom crying, knowing how much love my mother had put into creating that dish earlier that morning. At 14 years old, I had to stop saying certain words the way I was raised to say them. Coming home after school, looking at myself in the mirror, repeating words I, until I could say them the correct way after being made fun of for saying words like three, like tree, or library, like library, not really having an answer as to why I couldn't pronounce them the correct way. And as close to, to 19 years old, I had to stop telling people that I was from Georgia and instead telling them that I was really from the Philippines because I was sick and I was tired of being repeated to act question back, no, Jeremiah, where, where are you actually from? Despite now living most of my life in the United States of America. And I look back at all the wastes revolved around those years, the wasted tears, the wasted food, and most certainly the wasted time that I spent telling myself that my culture, my beliefs, my traditions were worth giving up for the acceptance of others. The unfortunate fact of the matter is that my story reflects a larger American narrative, that America, a country built on the platform of diversity and freedom, still shows partiality towards its acceptance. Acculturation, or the degree to which someone adopts the culture of their surrounding society, well, it runs rampant in our country, but it should not. Because the fact of the matter is, the more diversity and variety there is of culture, beliefs, and ideas, the more positive results are produced. Take America's most successful businesses, for example. Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, all of which have positive feedback when promoting diversity in the workplace. They promote increased innovation, better decision-making, and improved financial performance. Additionally, according to McKinsey and Co., their report says that out of 366 public companies analyzed, those in the top quarters for racial and ethnic diversity were 36, 36% 36 more likely to have financial returns above the national industry median. And according, done, according to a study done by the Society for Human Resource Management, organizations with a more diverse team, including ethnic and racial diversity, made better decisions up to 87% of the time. To me, the research is there. It is evident, and, and there's no use of shying away from individuality and diversity. And Cora Amparo, yet I am learning, has helped me advocate for the elimination of stigmas that are common within age diversity, immigration status, and so much more. I hope to tell folks that Rather than assimilate, we must unite in our differences. Ignorance causes intolerance, and a lack of exposure to different people can lead to the fear of the unknown, resulting in the hostility that we experience in our society today. Ancora Amparo, yet I am still learning, it's the notion that there is an infinite world of knowledge waiting to be explored. It is the notion that the greatest wisdom the greatest wisdom can stem from the youngest person in the room. It is refusing to invalidate someone due to different perspectives, culture, and beliefs, instead leaning in, eager to learn from them. I believe that progress is inevitable, that it requires a coalition of people who may not see eye to eye, but find common ground, that no matter what we look like, what we believe in, who we love, where we come from, that we are all equal. Progress is inevitable. And we must embrace each other's commonalities, but even more so and more importantly, our individual identities. For me, my story, the stories of countless others, are living accounts of the good that, that ne negating intolerance can bring to our society. My presence on this stage, it's, it's marked by an uncommon journey that has led to an unprecedented privilege, an unprecedented amount of firsts. The story of an immigrant kid from Davao City, Philippines, who barely spoke a word of English, is now the first in his family to graduate from college in the United States of America. 
at an institution that is the birthplace of higher education at the University of Georgia. Go dogs! <laughs> and we'll continue to receive education at the first college established in the United States at Harvard University. Ancora Amparo, yet I am still learning, is the notion that our story, our learning, and our acceptance is never finished. And this idea, well, it's motivated me to pursue a career in advocating for the rights of all people in hopes to return to my birth country of the Philippines to help fight against the abuse of command and corruption that led my family and I to move to the United States in the first place. Now, before I, I leave, I, I want to turn your attention back to when I was, was eight years old. Uh, it was at this age that, that my family and I moved from my birth country. And it was at this age that I, I really didn't know how to speak English, and it made learning how to read extremely, extremely hard for me. And I remember at eight years old, sitting right next to my mother as we sat across my, from my teacher at, at my elementary school in, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I remember at eight years old waiting to hear my teacher say to my mother that it'll be very hard for your son to learn how to read. I was discouraged. My mother was discouraged. But I remembered when I was eight years old, my, my mother not listening to my teacher, but instead telling me that hard work, determination, finding a silver lining, that, that leads to what can measure your ability. At eight years old, I realized that these things didn't set a limit to what I could achieve. Eight years old didn't mean or didn't set a measure to what I could achieve. Eight years old meant that my capabilities were infinite. And it was this age, eight years old, I believed in the notion of Encora and Paro, endless knowledge. And to this day, I am, you are, we are still learning. Thank you so much.